Today we will have a look at eight different ways how to make your code faster. Some of them might seem quite trivial, but I saw each single one of them in real code bases. Without too much talking, let's go. The first one is not using const expressions. For instance, if you have all information available to calculate something at compile time, you want to make sure that it actually is calculated at compile time. You don't want your program to calculate something that you should already know by the time the program is executed. So for instance, if you have a max function that is defined uh, in a lot of code bases as a template type, because you want to use it for basically anything, and it returns whether A is bigger than B or B is bigger than A. Uh, so a normal maximum function. But if you now call this function with constant values, it will still be evaluated during the runtime of the program. The easy way to get rid of this is to make this function here a const expression. This is by adding the const expression keyword here. Um, you basically tell the compiler that he is allowed to evaluate this function at compile time. So in the future, if you call now max with values that are already constant, then this will also be evaluated in compile time. It makes the code nice and readable and it still is very, very fast, fast at runtime because all the values are already calculated. The second one is using too much precision. I see so much code where people are afraid of using lower precision types. For instance, you want to calculate a simple multiplication, A and B, and you want to have a result. And you see A and B, they are fairly normal values, so 0.1 and 0.3, but still the type of them is using double. I know here it's pretty obvious, but in real code bases it might be a little bit more hidden, but I saw so many people being afraid of using, for instance, here just a float data type because they one single time ran into the problem that the precision was not big enough and because of that they decided to basically use the biggest precision available all of the time. But this makes the code really, really slow if you use precision that is bigger than the precision, precision you actually need. Another mistake I see quite often is not using no except. The keyword no except is very, very useful if you know that A, your function never froze, or B, if your function froze, you never intend to actually catch it. So if you have a function where you know either that it never froze or that you will never catch it, you should add the no except keyword because this will allow the compiler to optimize your code. So the compiler does not need to include the runtime paths for actually catching the exception and can directly go to exiting the program. It makes your executable smaller and it makes your code run faster. Another example is being unaware of the data that you're processing. So for instance, if you're having a 2D array and you want to go through the array, there are two ways to do it. Because it is important how the array lives in the cache, how the array actually is in memory, you have two ways of reading out the values. One is row major and the other is column major. So for instance, you can go through the columns first and you can go through the rows first. And depending on how your array is in the memory stored, it makes a huge runtime difference because one of the time it is cache friendly and the other time it's a disaster for the cache. So be aware how your memory is allocated and how your memory actually looks like to write cache efficient code. So in this example, it's much, much more efficient to go through the rows first because each row has a standard array inside. And then to go through the column second because if you go through the column second, it means that the array can always stay in cache and you profit off the cache hits directly and your code runs, runs that much faster. There are a lot of examples of having this, but it really depends on the data that you're processing and you should be very aware of that and optimize your code for the data. The next one is not using standard move. I'm seeing so much code where you create objects, you will never use them again, but still they are not reused 
even though it might be possible. So for instance, you have a function which is basically consuming an object and you have an object which after that never gets used again. In that case, it really makes sense to declare this an R value reference and to actually move the object. In this case, this code is much faster um, because the object gets reused in the consuming function and it's also safe because the object never gets reused after that. So look out for these instances where you can do this little trick. It really makes a difference on your runtime. Not using the auto keyword is also something that can hurt your performance. Not because auto makes your code faster, but because auto doesn't make mistakes. And in this case, for instance, you do have a map or a map which you have an integer which is pointing to values of my class. And then you decide to go through all of the entries of the map. So you say, yes, I want to go, uh, go through the entries and each entry is a standard pair of int and my class. However, this is now a small mistake which you pay big for in runtime because the value type of standard map actually is not standard pair uh, of int. It's standard pair, and you can see actually you can see it here. It's standard pair const key. So the correct type here would be uh, a constant integer, and this code which was previously here would lead to a copy of every single my map entry because the entry can actually be converted to that type. However, you do not want to create these copies. You want to use what actually is in my map. So you should use here either the correct type or to make it much more easier because the compiler knows the correct type already, use the auto keyword to go through this. And you have this in a lot of places. You have it in lambdas, you have it in uh, function return types, you have it in templates and so on and so forth. So the auto keyword really helps you out in figuring out the correct type. This example should be in coding C++ 101 because it's really trivial. However, I see it across a lot of code bases where people get this wrong. If you have an object and you want to use a function on that object, passing it by value usually is the wrong choice. If your class is big enough and expensive to copy, which basically is any class that has more than two data entries, you should always pass it by reference. So you should adapt the type to a const reference of my object and use the object by reference to avoid the copy of the object and to reuse what is already there. This should be never wrong, but I still see it all over the place. The last one that I have for you today is not using mplace back if it is possible. If you have a standard container, and you want to insert entries or you want to append entries to the standard container, I see a lot of people always referring to pushback. Pushback is a safe way to get something in the container and it's not right, but mplace can be faster. So if you do this, you create here an object of my class and you push back this object. It can be that depending on your code, this object is then not created in place which means that you need to move the app object into the container and this costs time. So the correct way to do that would be to use the mplace or mplace back function and to not create the object here, but to directly create the object in place. In this type, you can then make uh, use that the object is directly created and you avoid the unnecessary copy and this code can actually be faster and is guaranteed to not be slower than pushback. Faster code is at the heart of C++. We develop C++ because we love fast code. So if you want to have even faster code, you should have a look here and master this amazing technique to make your code even faster. That's all that I have for you today. And as always, enjoy coding.